Now, guys, guys, guys. What we've got over there is something that we can't tell you about. We've literally just been moved away from the bike. Thankfully, we're very, very trigger happy and we've got a load of photos, load of video content already, but it is a brand new Trek Madone. There is something bonkers going on with the seat tube on that and I genuinely mean bonkers. There's all sorts of aero claims that are going to be attached to this bike. Given the state that it's in, it looks like a finished product. We'd likely see this for the Tour de France in terms of a proper launch. Will it replace the Amonda? I don't think so. It's, the Amonda's only recently been launched. So I think this will still be a bike for the flatter days. But will we see riders like Tom Schoons, who is just there, Mr. Potato Power himself, will he be riding it on those medium mountain days? Because he likes to get in the breakaway from time to time. So the riders have just sped off for the start of stage one of the Criterium de Dauphiné. And to be honest, once they'd gone, we decided to go and find some shade. And well, now we've found it in this rugby stadium. Anyway, uh, we thought we'd take a look at the rest of the bike. The cutout at the rear end is obviously the main feature. It's got ISO flow written inside of it, which would be a move away from Trek's ISO speed concept, but maybe this is a drag reduction system? I'm not really sure. Um, it will be interesting to see what they come out with in terms of claims from the new bike when the press release lands. But what about the rest of the bike? Well, at the front end, one thing to notice is that the bar, well, it looks to be specific to this frame set. So it says Madone on it, and we know that it's new because of the rear end of the stem. Take a closer look and you've got uh, where the top cap sits. You've got a backing plate that allows for the top cap to be accessed, but also the stem bolts to be accessed from the side. Now, this is very similar to the SL7 that I ride at home. There, the top cap is accessed and the stem bolts are accessed in just the same way. And what this does, it makes it easier for the mechanics and the stupid home mechanic to make adjustments to their bike more easily than popping a full cover off of that stem. What we're likely going to find inside is that the cables are running under the stem or through the stem in this case and then down through the upper headset bearing before going into the down tube and wherever they need to go. With the massive head tube and the enormous bottom bracket joined together with a very chunky down tube, we can pretty easily suppose that this is going to be a bike favoured by the sprinters and everything about this is going to be stiffness and aerodynamics. Now, the bike that the team is riding, well, they're a SRAM sponsored team. So you've got the latest red ETAP access group set. That means 12 speed wireless shifting and the team has a range of options for running a one by chain ring at the front if the races allow. We've seen that a lot in uh, races like Paris-Roubaix where there's very little elevation change. Probably won't see it round here because it's so mountainous, but maybe we'll see it for some of the flatter days of the Tour de France. Trek's subsidiary brand Bontrager provides the wheels. Again, the riders have a ton of options um, from about a 60 millimeter deep wheel down to about a 30 millimeter. We expect they'll be opting for something around the range of a 45 in these hills, um, but we may see the 60s come out for the faster days, especially on this bike. Pirelli is the tire sponsor of Trek Sega Fredo, and they've been pushing uh, their tubeless tires quite away with the new team. And the riders seem to be quite receptive to the new tech. Inside of those, we'd expect there to be some sort of foam insert so that the riders can continue safely in a straight line if they puncture, because if you puncture a tubeless tire, unlike a tub or a clincher, it just squirms all over the place. It's absolute nightmare, which isn't safe in a massive bunch race. Saddles also come from Bontrager, and again, the riders have a pick of the range so they can pick whatever feels comfy for them. 
I'm here with Tom's, who is making fun of my pronunciation of his last name. Uh, quite understandably, I'm butchering it. Tom's, you're on the new bike today. Are you able to tell us a little bit about it? How is it to ride? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? That's, um, that's funny, because that's exactly what your press officer said. Um, have, you, have you seen anything new about the bike? Uh, no. Ah, the tires are new. They put on fresh tires. The for, for the oh, this is, this is good. This yeah. is good. Nothing new about the frame, then? Frame? Ah, uh, uh, no. Does it have a frame? Yeah, yeah. I think it has two, two wheels, a frame. Uh, from what I understand, there's like 12 speed in the back. The smallest one is a 10 cog. Uh, I believe it's um, there's electronic shifting. Um, that's about it, as far as I know. With this groundbreaking information, I'm going to have to let him go. All right, enjoy your shower and dinner. So this is quite a controversial bike already. My phone has been, well, I wouldn't say blowing up, but it's been quite active on our Instagram and Twitter channels. Do you think this bike is beautiful or do you just hate it? Let us know down in the comments below. We will have loads more coverage of this bike, most likely in our Tour de France coverage, which is coming up later this month. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Before you go, remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.